Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be answering a viewer question about uh, Chatterbait colors. I just did a video on the uh, Chatterbait Elite Evo. I got a shipment in just the other day and got to spend some time on the water with that, that new bait that was introduced at last iCast, uh, so this past July. And uh, absolutely love it. I think it's gonna be an absolute killer that you're gonna see a lot about, um, you know, when it comes to tournament wins and things like that. Very, very similar um, as far as the action and the just overall feel of it and just the overall quality of the components to the jackhammer. I'm not saying it's like a replacement of the jackhammer, but it's definitely one that's gonna be super relevant. Um, but I got a question from a viewer, like I said, um, that watched that video and it's from Joseph and he said since I found that video I've been following your tournament progress so thank you very much for that uh, it, it, you know whenever somebody sends me a message like that saying that they're uh, you know following my tournaments and and that they just overall you know it, th that kind of support just means a lot from you guys and and so many of you reach out whether it's in the comment section uh you know on the videos or reach out on my other social media or or emails like this and that's like one of the 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 coolest things uh that that i can receive is just you know hearing that you guys follow my tournament so thank you very much joseph and everybody else that follows my tournament fishing um, his question is, in stained water, what color chatterbait in the new Evo line of baits would you choose to resemble a shad, a bluegill, and a crawfish? Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to answer my email. Well, thank you, Joseph, for the question and for the support. Uh, I've picked out a, a few of the colors that I really recommend uh, for you know the, those situations. Um, and really, you know, this is the, the colors that I'm choosing. You can really apply those to any of the chatterbait lines um, and uh, in a lot of baits just in general. Um, some of these are going to be pretty, you know, typical color choices um, and, you know, that you see pretty much the same exact color pattern across the different lines of chatterbaits. Um, like these first two are definitely, you know, pretty standard. Um, but let's start with shad because that was the first, uh, you know, uh, prey species that he mentioned. Um, shad, when it comes to, uh, you know, stained water, really what I want to accomplish, and this is pretty much the same across the board when you're talking about stained and dirty water. Now, there can be a big difference between stained water and muddy water, like a really big difference. So we're gonna pick something kind of in between that's that's pretty heavily stained, you know, where visibility is, is pretty low. And so that's kind of the uh, uh, situation that I'm coming from uh, when it comes to the, the color selection. But when it comes to, to colors, whether you're trying to imitate a shad or, or something that dar that's darker like a bluegill or crawfish, you really want something that stands out in that dirty water. So you're talking about opaque color combinations. You're talking about, um, you know, colors that just create a very bold profile. Um, you know, poor choices. We'll just kind of show you a couple of, of uh, you know, colors that probably aren't the best in, um, you know, real dirty water. I'm dropping these all over the place. All right, so this one right here is called Electric Shad. Great, great clear water color, like fantastic clear water color. And, you know, even into having a little bit of stain. Um, but as you can see here, there's really no opaque colors. That You've got kind of a transparent gray on the top, and then it goes into some transparent, like pearlescent uh, strands on the bottom. And then it's got a silver, you know, blade. This is really a bait that's not going to show up very well in dirty water situations. It's just, it's just not creating that profile that's very, uh, you know, very strong. Sorry about that. Um, another one is very similar to that. You know, this one right here, Glitter Bomb. Probably not a great uh, dirty water presentation. Uh, I'm not saying that I wouldn't throw these in dirty water. You know, you can actually make up for, you know, the, the uh, color pattern with the actual chatterbait, the skirt, the head, and the blade by using a, a bolder, you know, uh, trailer, you know. And so you can mix and match and make a clear water color 
as far as a chatterbait, work in dirty water. But I generally don't do that. Usually I have all of these colors at my disposal, and so I wanna maximize um, you know, my success by choosing, you know, the optimal co uh, color. So these are not optimal colors. They, they are m more suited for clear water situation um, and situations where, you know, the fish are using their sense of, of sight pretty, pretty well. You know, they can see a long distance. And, uh, and that's why I like to use those, you know, the more transparent skirts, the ones that have more of that like scale pattern, type, uh, you know, skirts on there. Um, those are really good for clear water. All right, so uh, for shad, really in dirtier water situations, there's two colors that I use, and they're pretty much the only two colors that I use. Now, uh, you know, the jet, in the jackhammer, Z-Man came out with a really, really good stained water shad imitation called Dirty White. That one actually it does have some some uh, you know white scale pattern, uh, so like white and black colored uh, uh, you know strands in there, but it's a solid white skirt. And solid opaque colors are going to be the what you're looking for in dirty water. So that's why I like to choose these two. Okay, so either white or uh, chartreuse and white. Those are the two colors that I would recommend. Um, chartreuse and white in the new Evo is really attractive to me because you've got that gold blade. And to me, gold blades and gold in, in general uh, shows up really, really good in dirty water, especially when you're talking about like early season runoff colored water. So like uh, pre during the pre-spawn and usually that during that time of year, the water isn't, you know, stained because it has like algae in the water, you know, like algae bloom, like you would see during the summertime. Usually it's, it's stained because you've got a lot of rain runoff that's bringing all that sediment into the water and uh, clouding it up that way. And in those situations, um, in dirty water and, and really in, in stained water in general, gold is very, very good. And so this, this chartreuse and white, is gonna be a really solid choice for uh, stained and dirty water situations where you're trying to imitate shad. Uh, but, you know, good old, you know, plain white is gonna be really good too. Both of these are gonna show up very, very well. Um, the chartreuse and white, uh, it just edges out the white just a little bit because the, the blade is actually gold, which it definitely reflects better in dirtier water than just a plain silver blade. But, both of them are gonna work really, really well. And I would pair both of those with, you know, some kind of like pearl or white colored uh, trailer, you know, and something that's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, has a little bit more vibration. You know, the, the diesel minnows from Z-Man, the pearl colored diesel minnows is probably gonna be a, uh, a top choice for those those baits because it has that paddle tail, um, it creates a little bit extra vibration, it's good profile, it just works really, really well. All right, so let's move on to the uh, the bluegill imitations. All right, so there really there's there's three, and bluegill and crawfish are going to really overlap because they share a lot of the same coloration um, in, in a lot of occasions. Um, this one right here is actually called Bama Craw, but I think it's going to be excellent for both uh, crawfish and for bluegill. So Bama Craw. That's color right there. Really good green pumpkin base, uh, but it has a lot of like oranges and, uh, and, and browns in there too. So this one's gonna be really good. And it also has that copper colored blade, which is really unique. You don't see that really in any of the other chatter baits. Uh, usually you're just looking at silver, gold, and some type of painted blade, but this one, you know, having copper, that's gonna show up really, really good in stain water. Um, and, uh, and so this one right here is gonna be really solid choice for bluegill and, uh, and crawfish in, in kind of the moderately stained, um, you know, water that you're going to experience. So not like super dirty, but moderately stained. This one's going to be really good, uh, because it is a little bit on the, uh, the milder, you know, as far as the, the darkness. So like it wouldn't be my first choice for muddy water because it's not quite dark enough to cr really, you know, 
show off that that profile to the level that you want um but something like uh you know if if it started getting a lot dirtier i would go to something like just classic green pumpkin green pumpkin is just always going to be a really good choice you can see this one has that dark green pumpkin painted blade so that's going to show up really good the uh, green pumpkin coloration of this is going to to really show up really good in in dirty water situations dark cloud cover type days um that sort of thing so it's it's just that bold uh you know profile but once you start getting into you know really uh dirty water situations regardless of of whether you're you're trying to imitate shad or bluegill or uh, sorry bluegill or crawfish black and blue can be really really good in those dirty water situations but you know if I'm to be honest, even though, you know, the principle of using black and blue, uh, you know, I like if I'm pitching a jig in dirty water, I'm going to go with black and blue. Um, green pumpkin is going to show up really, really well, probably equally as well. And it's just more, uh, you know, realistic uh, when you're trying to imitate a, a bluegill or a crawfish. So um, those those two those those are the three colors that I would I would reach for first for normal situations where you're trying to imitate crawfish or bluegill. Um, again, from cl the the clearest to the the most dirty water, I would go with Bama craw first for the clearer water. Then once you start getting darker water, you would go with green pumpkin, and then the darkest water I would go with black and blue or just stick with green pumpkin. Clear as mud, right? Um, the final uh, color choice that I'm gonna uh, show you guys is primarily for crawfish imitation and it's primarily for early spring. So cold water, pre-spawn, when, um, you know, and especially in the south. So like, you know, Lake Gunnersville is, is one that, that this is really popular. All the Texas lakes, um, Florida, it's not as popular because they, you don't really have that phenomenon where the, sh the, the crawfish turn red, but any place that the crawfish turn red during that early season, um, this is going to be a solid color. This is the lava craw. I really like this color that they introduced for the Evo, um, because it's not just solid red and orange just like the uh, the fire craw uh, you know offerings this one has a green pumpkin um you know uh, top and then the belly of it is that that fire craw colored uh orange and then of course you got the bright orange blade but but i think that color combination of the green pumpkin and the fire craw skirt material is really really uh, going to create a lifelike um you know package overall so in the spring if I'm trying to imitate uh, crawfish, which is very, very common, you know, that's a key food source that time of year. Um, this is going to be a really, really solid one for all clarities. You know, even in clear water situations, when those fish are keyed in on those red or orange uh, uh, crawfish, it doesn't matter if it's if, if it's crystal clear or just mud, you know, mud chocolate milk. It's it, it, that's going to be a solid color. It's just because that time of year, those, those uh, many different species of crayfish turn that bright orange red. Um, so anyways, guys, uh, Joseph, that, that is kind of my answer, kind of walking you through some of the, the uh, colors of the new Chatterbait Elite Evo. I think that these are going to really serve you well for imitating, you know, shad, crawfish and bluegill um, and a lot of it just depends on the, the the lake that you're fishing the region you're fishing the type of of you know uh, bait fish that you're seeing in the lake that sort of thing but this would be my general kind of process for selection selecting the right color out of this new evo line so anyways guys thank you very much for watching thank you joseph for the question and also for the support and other than that i'm going to see you guys out on the water uh, make sure you like share subscribe and trust the process